King al-Najashi, born Ashima ibn Abjar, was thrust into a world of royal intrigue and profound responsibility from a very young age. His story begins in the ancient kingdom of Abyssinia, a land rich in culture and history, where Christianity flourished under the rule of a succession of powerful monarchs. Al-Najashi's early life was marked by personal tragedy and political upheaval. His father, the king, was assassinated in a brutal power struggle, a common peril in the turbulent politics of the time. This tragic event left a young Ashama vulnerable, not just to the whims of court politics, but to the very real dangers that faced a child of royal blood in such chaotic times. In an unexpected twist of fate, Al-Najashi's life took a dramatic turn when he was sold to a merchant. This period of his life, shrouded in mystery, was a stark contrast to the royal upbringing one would expect for a future king. It was during these formative years, away from the luxuries and protection of the royal court, that Al-Najashi developed the qualities that would later define his reign. Resilience, empathy for the common man, and a keen understanding of the complexities of human nature. His return to the throne was nothing short of remarkable. Ascending to power at a young age, Al-Najashi had to navigate the treacherous waters of ruling a kingdom that was still reeling from the loss of his father and the instability that followed. It was a testament to his character and his innate leadership qualities that he was able to stabilize the kingdom and earn the respect and loyalty of his subjects. Under his rule, Abyssinia not only regained its stability, but also flourished. Al-Najashi was known for his wisdom, justice, and commitment to the well-being of his people. These traits would later catch the attention of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who praised him for his fairness and compassion. King Al-Najashi of Abyssinia, often remembered as a remarkable figure in Islamic history, was renowned for several notable characteristics that distinguished him not only as a ruler, but also as a person of profound integrity and virtue. Generosity was one of the hallmarks of Al-Najashi's reign. He was known for his open-handedness and kindness, not just towards his subjects, but also towards those who sought refuge in his kingdom. This attribute was especially evident when the first group of Muslims fleeing persecution from Mecca arrived in Abyssinia. Al-Najashi offered them sanctuary, ensuring their safety and freedom in his land. His willingness to extend help to these refugees who were strangers to him exemplifies his extraordinary benevolence. Truthfulness was another cornerstone of Al-Najashi's character. He was a man who valued honesty and transparency, both in his personal dealings and in the administration of his kingdom. This trait was crucial in maintaining trust and respect among his people and his allies. It also played a significant role during the interactions with the Quraysh emissaries from Mecca, where Al-Najashi's commitment to truth allowed him to see through their deceptions and uphold justice. Above all, Al-Najashi's commitment to justice is perhaps what he is most celebrated for. He ruled with fairness and impartiality, ensuring that all who lived under his reign were treated equitably. His court was a place where disputes were resolved with fairness and where the rule of law prevailed over personal interest or bias. This unwavering commitment to justice not only endeared him to his subjects, but also earned him the admiration of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who praised al-Najashi as a just and righteous ruler. In a pivotal chapter of early Islamic history, we turn our focus to the first Muslim migrants who sought refuge in the kingdom of Abyssinia. This exodus, driven by the relentless persecution faced by Muslims in Mecca, marked a significant moment for both the Islamic community and King al-Najashi of Abyssinia. As the intensity of persecution heightened in Mecca, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
advised his followers to seek shelter under the just rule of al-Najashi. Recognizing the wisdom in this council, a small group of Muslims embarked on a perilous journey across the Red Sea to Abyssinia. Their objective was clear, to find a safe haven where they could practice their faith freely, away from the oppression of the Quraysh, the dominant tribe in Mecca. Upon their arrival, these Muslim refugees were warmly received by al-Najashi. Despite the existing religious differences, the king's commitment to justice and fairness transcended these divides. He extended his protection to the Muslim migrants, ensuring their safety and freedom of worship in his land. This act of kindness and tolerance was a testament to al-Najashi's magnanimity and his adherence to the principles of justice. The situation, however, soon escalated when the Quraysh, determined to quash the growing influence of Islam, sent a delegation to Abyssinia. Their mission was to convince al-Najashi to extradite the Muslim migrants back to Mecca. Armed with lavish gifts and persuasive arguments, the delegation sought to sway the king's opinion. In a display of extraordinary fairness, al-Najashi refused to make an immediate decision. Instead, he summoned the Muslims to his court, offering them a platform to explain their beliefs and the reasons behind their migration. The Muslim representative, Jafar Ibn Abi Talib, eloquently recounted the plight of the Muslims in Mecca and the teachings of Islam, emphasizing the commonalities between Christianity and Islam, particularly the reverence for Jesus and Mary. Moved by Jafar's words and recognizing the truth in them, al-Najashi made a momentous decision. He declared that the Muslims would not be handed over to the Quraysh and would continue to receive his protection. This historic decision not only safeguarded the early Muslim community, but also underscored the profound impact of religious tolerance and justice. Al-Najashi's ruling allowed the Muslim migrants to live in Abyssinia with dignity and freedom, setting a precedent for religious asylum and coexistence. This act of solidarity by al-Najashi was more than just a political stance. It was a reflection of his deep-seated belief in fairness and compassion. By providing refuge to the Muslims, al-Najashi not only offered them a sanctuary, but also fostered an environment where interfaith dialogue and mutual respect could thrive. This period of asylum in Abyssinia would later prove to be a crucial phase for the Muslim community as it allowed them to grow and strengthen in faith away from the persecution they faced in their homeland. Al-Najashi's decision also marked the beginning of a long-standing relationship between the Muslims and Abyssinia, one built on mutual respect and shared values. His actions demonstrated that even in an era marked by tribal loyalties and religious strife, it was possible for a ruler to transcend boundaries and uphold the principles of humanity and justice. Al-Najashi's kingdom, known for its peace and prosperity, became a safe haven for the early Muslims fleeing persecution. This did not sit well with the Quraysh, who were determined to bring these refugees back to Mecca. In an attempt to sway al-Najashi, the Quraysh sent a high-powered delegation to Abyssinia, armed with lavish gifts and a carefully crafted narrative to convince the king to extradite the Muslims. Upon the arrival of the Quraysh delegation, al-Najashi showcased his wisdom and justice. He refused to make any decision without hearing both sides of the story. The Quraysh presented their case, depicting the Muslims as rebels and a threat to societal harmony. However, al-Najashi, known for his fair judgment, insisted on listening to the Muslim refugees before making a decision. The Muslims, represented by Jaffa Ibn Abi Talib, eloquently explained their faith and their reasons for seeking refuge in Abyssinia. Jafar recited verses from the Quran, which deeply moved al-Najashi, 
further illustrating the shared values between Christianity and Islam. Struck by the beauty and truth in Jafar's words, Al-Najashi famously declared, Indeed, what has come with these people and what we have received from Jesus is like two rays of light from the same lamp. In a remarkable display of justice and integrity, Al-Najashi refused the gifts from the Quraysh and granted the Muslim refugees protection and freedom to practice their faith in his land. This decision not only marked a significant moment of religious tolerance and interfaith harmony, but also cemented al-Najashi's legacy as a just and wise ruler. His actions during this period demonstrated a profound understanding of justice, going beyond religious and cultural boundaries. Al-Najashi's refusal to bow to external pressure and his commitment to fairness had a far-reaching impact, providing a safe haven for the Muslim community during a critical period in their history. This story of diplomacy, justice, and moral fortitude remains a powerful testament to the character and legacy of King al-Najashi, setting an enduring example for rulers and leaders across the ages. Al-Najashi's actions during this tense diplomatic standoff did more than just protect a vulnerable group. They showcased the power of moral leadership. He exhibited a profound respect for religious freedom, a principle that was far ahead of his time. This decision not only solidified his reputation as a just ruler, but also underscored the importance of adhering to one's principles in the face of external pressures. The journey of King al-Najashi towards embracing Islam is a tale of profound transformation influenced by the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This segment unfolds the remarkable story of how a Christian king's heart was touched by the message of Islam. Al-Najashi's introduction to Islam began when the first group of Muslim migrants arrived in Abyssinia, seeking refuge from persecution in Mecca. Their stories of faith and perseverance, along with their descriptions of Prophet Muhammad's teachings, piqued Al-Najashi's interest. He was known for his fairness and openness to different religious beliefs, a trait that would play a crucial role in his eventual conversion. The pivotal moment came with the arrival of a letter from Prophet Muhammad himself. This letter, a historical artifact of immense significance, invited al-Najashi to embrace Islam. It was a respectful yet powerful message outlining the principles of Islam and emphasizing the common ground shared by Christianity and Islam, particularly the belief in one God and the reverence for Jesus Christ as a prophet. Al-Najashi's response to this letter was profound and heartfelt. Moved by the Prophet's words, he recognized the truth in the message of Islam. In a symbolic and historic gesture, he declared his acceptance of Islam becoming a Muslim while still maintaining his position as a just and respected ruler of Abyssinia. As our journey through the life of King al-Najashi, also known as Ashama Ibn Abjah, draws to a close, we arrive at a poignant and significant chapter, his passing. King Negus, a title synonymous with al-Najashi, left an indelible mark on history, not just as a ruler, but as a beacon of justice and a pivotal figure in the early days of Islam. It was in the year 630 AD, during the ninth year of Hijra, that King al-Najashi breathed his last. The news of his death resonated profoundly with Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Al-Najashi's demise was not just the loss of a great king. It represented the passing of a true ally, a protector of the oppressed, and a man who found his faith in the face of great trials. In an extraordinary tribute to Al-Najashi, the Prophet, peace be upon him, gathered his companions and announced the passing of the Abyssinian king. What followed was a remarkable and unprecedented event in Islamic history. The Prophet led the absentee funeral prayer known as 
Salat al Ghaib for al Najashi. This was a unique honor, a testament to al Najashi's faith and the high esteem in which he was held by the Prophet. This solemn moment underscored the profound impact of al Najashi's rule and his contributions to the early Muslim community. His reign was marked not only by his fair governance, but also by his embrace of Islam, which he accepted after being deeply moved by the words of the Quran and the message of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Al-Najashi's conversion was a significant event, symbolizing the reach and universal appeal of Islam's message of peace and brotherhood. The legacy of King Al-Najashi extends far beyond the boundaries of his kingdom. His story is a powerful narrative of faith, compassion, and justice. It serves as a reminder of the profound connections between different cultures and religions and the impact one individual can have in shaping history. His life and decisions provided a safe haven for the early Muslims and his actions continue to inspire to this day.